Welcome back everyone, Georgina here. Today we're going to talk about the four suits and the court cards. The deck I'm using is the Radiant Rider Weight Tarot, which is a recoloring of the Weight Smith Tarot, but you can use any tarot deck you like. Now back in ye olden days of tarot, the four suits were described as being active or passive, and the court cards were defined as being either masculine or feminine according to their sex. Kings were men who were masters, queens were women who were supportive sidekicks to the king, yada yada. Even when I was first learning tarot back in the 1970s, meanings that strictly defined court cards by their sex and gender um, still very commonplace, you know, as if everybody was cisgendered and everybody was straight. Well, that's just ridiculous. And if you think that's bad, there were even physical assignments for the court cards. Wands were fair-skinned people with white, blonde, or red hair. Cups were fair-skinned people with brown or auburn hair. And swords were olive-skinned people with black hair. And anyone who wasn't a white European was shuffled off to the suit of pentacles. Ouch! Of course, contemporary tarot readers find this very limiting and, quite frankly, very offensive. <laughs> so, if we want to provide good, relevant tarot readings, we need to update our language. So, kings. They can be people of any sex or gender who are mature and externalize their experiences. They know how to be an adult in the outside world. And queens, they can be people of any sex or gender who are mature adults but they internalize their experiences and choose to express themselves to a close circle of friends and family. Knights, these can be people of any sex or gender who are still working out what it means to be an adult. They're running around, having lots of character building life experiences. And then the pages can be people of any sex or gender who are inexperienced in the ways of the world. They're still learning who they are and they have not yet decided what role they want to play in a society. So you could be any of these cards, depending on your life situation. Managing your own company? Well, that's a king thing. Taking care of your kids or coaching a friend? Well, that's a queen quality. Moving from place to place or job to job? You're expressing night energy. And if you're learning a new skill, well, you're a studious page. I placed the court cards into four families. The wands, and that's the folks you're seeing right now, this is the entrepreneurial family. You can find these passionate, ambitious folks starting up their own businesses. Steve Jobs of Apple, Bill Gates of Microsoft, Elon Musk of Tes Tesla Motors and SpaceX, Oprah Winfrey, Doris Fitcher, who started The Gap, Sarah Blakely, who started Spanx, all of these dedicated folks worked hard to make their dreams a reality. So the cards in the suit, in the suit of wands in general, deal with work and ambition. Now let's take a closer look at the family. The king of wands, he's the company founder, the person with vision and drive. When you seek a mentor, look to this king. The queen of wands is the hospitality queen. She works in public relations and arranging company events. When you see this queen, you are likely to receive a party invite, or maybe you're throwing a party yourself. The Knight of Wands, he is a manager, an aggressive salesperson. He's the mover and a shaker. When you see this knight, expect a sudden change in your employment, your residence, or both. And the Page of Wands is the chatty intern, learning what makes business work. The Page of Wands is also a literal page, carrying messages between departments. When you see this page, expect a lot of email and an increased activity in your Twitter and Facebook feeds. Got that? Okay. Moving on to the suit of cups. This is the emotionally savvy family. These are the artists, the poets, the musicians, and the mystics. They're also your immediate family and relatives. In the workplace, you may find them in the Human Resources Office or in the Employee Assistance Program. They are people who have great empathy for others. So the cards in this suit, in the Suit of Cups, deal with things as emotions, dreams, desires, and memories. The King of Cups is the emotionally supportive person. When you seek a mentor in the fine arts, look to this king. He has paternal instincts. The Queen of Cups is also an emotionally supportive person, but is concerned primarily with matters inside the immediate family. 
You can depend on this queen to listen sympathetically to your problems and, well, maternal instincts. The Knight of Cups is the Romantic Knight. This card has traditionally meant a new romantic relationship, but it can also mean expressing yourself creatively through the fine arts, uh, music, poetry, writing. Either way, when you see this knight, there is an opportunity to express love. Page of Cups is the dreamy, mystical page. This page is learning how to express their feelings. That emo kid writing bad poetry today, well, tomorrow, is a rock star. We all start from somewhere. Let's move on to swords. Swords. Now this is the intelligence gathering family. I think of it as a spy agency. They deal with information, strategy, and planning. These are also the politicians, military strategists, soldiers, and spies. Scientists, lawyers, and librarians are also part of this family, as are tech analysts and whistleblowers. Oh yeah, Edward Snowden, definitely a member of the sword family. The suit of swords is filled with action and intrigue. Very exciting. The king of swords is the head of the spy agency. When you need all sides of a situation to be thoroughly examined or a masterful, masterful plan of action for dealing with your challenges, you look to this king. This king is your attorney or your CPA. The queen of swords is an analyst who sees deep connections between the cold hard facts. This queen internalizes knowledge and gains brilliant insight into the way the world works. This queen is also known as the widowed queen. The Knight of Swords. Now, this is our James Bond of the Tarot Spy Agency. If you need a bold, brash champion or advocate to your cause, this is your guy. <laughs> the Page of Swords, this is the sneaky page. This page enjoys gathering information on everyone and everything, but hasn't learned how to determine the value of the intel yet. <laughs> Moving on to Pentacles. Pentacles is the legacy family. Remember how Cups was the emotionally savvy family? They're very much like your immediate family. Pentacles would be the family legacy, the one that's going to survive generations and generations. This is a dynasty. We are talking about old money families like the Rockefellers and big business tycoons like Donald Trump. But for all that grandeur and big talk, this is also the family that physically works with the earth the farmers, gardeners, and yes, miners. Also, folks whose business involves property, such as realtors, land developers, ecological conservationists, and environmentalists. Bankers and stockbrokers are also part of this family. So the cards in this suit deal with resources, money, and property. The King of Pentacles, this is the Grand Patriarch who established the family business a very long time ago. It is this king whose painting hangs prominently in the company lobby. When you need resources, money, time, equipment, and you need those things to reach your goals, this is the king to whom you must request it. The queen of pentacles, well, this is the grand matriarch of the family business. This queen is one of the ladies who lunch, leveraging their position and power to help the less fortunate. They set up foundations to make positive changes that will last long after they are gone. The Knight of Pentacles is the slow-moving knight. He brings the best opportunity for wealth and position, but it will take a long time for these opportunities to present themselves. If you're looking for something to happen quickly, like a new job or a new money offer, yeah, don't count on this knight immediately. It takes a while. Then there's the Page of Pentacles. This is the most studious bookish page. This card frequently signifies a person in school. They may lack practical hands-on experience, but they've studied the experiences of others. Now, did any of these court cards sound like you or remind you of people you know? When you're doing a tarot reading, you may be working with a spread, also known as a layout or a pattern, and it'll require you to choose what we call a significator card. Uh, that's a person to represent the person who is receiving the reading. 
kind of an avatar. So let's play a game. Take out your court cards in the deck and assign a card for yourself and for some of the people in your life. Be sure to jot down your assignments in your tarot journal. Now when you're reading for yourself in the future and you see any of those cards, you'll know who they represent. For example, if you knew a young person who was just starting out in school, you might choose this page of pentacles to represent them. If you were reading for an older woman who had lost her husband, you might choose the Widow card, the Queen of Swords. If you're looking to establish a new business and you need some advice, you might choose the King of Wands. That would represent him. If you're going back and perhaps learning a new artistic skill like painting or poetry, yeah, Page of Cups, that would represent you. For myself, the Queen of Cups represents my mom. So have fun with that. Next time, we'll talk about the Four Aces, and I'll share an original tarot spread of mine that uses just the 16 cards you've learned so far. I call it the Dream Team spread. It'll be your very first tarot spread. Hey, exciting. <laughs> now, remember, when you read for other people, they may have a very different idea of which card best represents them. I had a querent many years ago that didn't like any of the court cards. She insisted on using a major arcana card. She insisted on using the star as her significator. Now, always honor your querent's wishes. It's their reading, after all. So be flexible and chat with your querent to determine the best significator card together. And that's it for this time. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to like it. And if you've really enjoyed it, please share it and subscribe to the channel. Tell me in the comments section what kinds of tarot subjects you want to see in future videos. Until next time, remember, the magic is not in the cards. The magic is in you. Be awesome. Bye.